See if he eats it. Oh, oh, got him. <laughs> For some reason, they love these leprechauns. Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong. In this video, I'm gonna answer a question that came in and it is, what is the best lure for bonnet head sharks up on shallow grass flats? And, and so really for many years, I didn't think that it was possible that, that bonnet heads would hit lures because I've thrown just everything over the years, everything that I used to use um, and just got turned down over and over and over again. And it was really disheartening. So I just assumed that they would only eat you know, live or, or natural bait up on, the, up on the shallows. But recently though, I finally found a lure that's surprisingly effective and it's been consistent really throughout the last six months as I've been testing this lure and, and it has been the Alabama Leprechaun. So just this is a five inch split tail jerkbait rigged on a weedless hook, on a weighted hook rigged weedless is extremely good for those bonnet heads up on the shallow grass flats. And I've done some research on these sharks just to try to figure out like why that is. And I learned some cool things. And so number one is that bonnet heads are the only shark species that's an omnivore. So meaning that they can actually survive on both plant and animal matter, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So I think that's why they're up on the shallow grass flats so often. And, and you've, if you're up, spend much time on those shallow grass flats, you've probably seen bonnet heads. And if you're like me, you throw at them and, and they're, they're very finicky. Um, but for whatever reason, they really like this lure and just looking up their diet on what they eat. So they pretty much focus on crustaceans. So blue crabs, number one, and, as well as shrimp. So they're looking for crabs and shrimp and just looking at the underwater footage of this leprechaun, we, we did a mini course and, and, uh, and, and you had to, took underwater footage just to show exactly what's happening underwater. But what, what really surprised me when I looked at that is, is how much the action of this lure, when you do the double twitch method that we, that we recommend, how much it looks like a scared shrimp that's darting up out of the seagrass. And that's exactly why I believe that these bonnet heads eat this lure so aggressively is because when I see him, I'll just cast up ahead. I'll just lead it by like three feet. They're not very spooky at all. So I cast just a little bit ahead of him and just it needs to get enough time to drop down to the bottom. And, and then as soon as it gets about three inches away, I'll do a quick little twitch. And they just, it seems like they just instinctively come up and hit it. Where obviously you won't catch every single one that comes by, but, but a, a, big, a big percentage will actually come and smack it. And it's just a lot of fun. So those days when, it, when the redfish and, and sea trout snook, when they, they're finicky, right? Those are those really calm days where it's calm and clear on the grass flats. The, the days that the, the redfish bite is the toughest is actually the best for these bonnet heads because you can see them, right? They're gonna be up, they're gonna be easily visible. Um, most importantly, they're not gonna be as spooky as everything else. So you can go up there, you can even get, you know, 15 feet away in many cases and just do a quick little easy pitch and just let that lure fall, do a couple twitches and game on. And they're a ton of fun. They fight extremely hard. And it's just, you know, sight fishing in general, it's just, a, just an absolute blast. So a couple tips on, on just maximizing your odds. So number one is you need to be as weedless as possible. And that's again, another benefit of this lure is that when rigged on the, on the weighted hooks, I like the owner twist locks for this. I prefer the three out size, um, but the four out works good as well. And whether you go a, a 16th ounce weight or an eighth ounce weight on the shank, they both work fine. So whatever you can get your hands on. But what you wanna do is you want to make sure to skin hook the point, right? Do the normal rigging and then you skin hook the point so that the point of the lure is now in the, the plastic itself. So now you're guaranteed to not get snagged on the weeds. That's the worst thing that can happen, you get snagged in the weeds, you're not gonna get snagged. And the same premise holds true for a redfish, sea trout, snook flounder as well, right? This is a very, very good lure for up there in the shallow grass flats because it mimics a scared shrimp just so, so well. And also again, it will not get snagged on the grass when, uh, when, when you're in prime time where you have that one cast and it's a make or break deal. You do not want to get snagged on the grass in that capacity. So another tip I found is that adding some scent is a smart play. These do come with some scent on them and I have caught plenty of bonnet heads without adding extra scent, but it seems like the more the merrier. And so what I really like is this Dr. Juice. I've done good with Proker as well, but this seems to outperform. This is the Dr. Juice inshore slam scent combined with this lure is a very, very good combination. All right, and so final tip, if you're gonna do this type of fishing, it comes to handling the sharks, right? So when you get them close, you, you really wanna make sure that your, that your hands are away from their mouths and, and they have sharp teeth, they are shark species. So you do not want to lose any digits or get any, any big cuts. And so the worst thing you can do, and I see it all the time, so make sure you don't do this, is to grab the tail thinking that when you grab it as far away from their mouth as possible, you're safe. That's the worst place you can grab it. Sharks do not have bones. 
They have cartilage, they're very flexible, they're very strong, and they're very fast. So when you grab that tail, what their immediate response is gonna be is to swing their head around, and now their teeth is right by your fingers, and that's not a good thing. You do not want that. So do not grab the tail. Where you wanna grab it is right on the top of their other body, in between their dorsal fin and their head. So get them up there close, whether you're on a paddleboard like I was, or a kayak or boat, whatever. Get them up there close, and then wait to grab them center mass. And when you grab from the top, there's no way that they can get you when you're holding them there. The fact that their head protrudes how it does, and the fact that they just simply cannot bend that, that far, your hands are as safe as possible. So grab them center mass, get them under control. They're gonna freak out for a second, and then they're gonna calm down. Keep hold with the one hand, get a set of pliers. You can pull out your, your lure right then, nice and, and carefree, get the lure out and let it go, and, it, and it's off to go out there and, and uh, hopefully get caught another time by, by somebody else. So it's a ton of fun. If you haven't done this type of fishing, I highly recommend it. It's just a blast, and, and, it, and it really gets overlooked. So it's a fishery that, that is really not very pressured. These sharks are not very scared at all. You can get surprisingly close, and, uh, and again, it's, it's just a, an absolute ton of fun. So uh, this lure's been working great, so highly, highly recommend it. Again, Alabama Leprechaun on the owner twist lock hooks. I'll put links down below. It's the, everything's on fishstrong.com on our online store. And if you're an Insider Club member, you can save a good amount on everything you need. But if you have any other lures that you've found that works great for bonnet heads in the shallows as well, please let us know. Love to hear from you. Love to, to test out some more lures because, again, like I said, this is a fun fishery, especially in the summer on those, those calm days where it's just the bite's really tough from snook reds and trout. Um, these bonnet heads, that's, like, that's really the prime time. You can see them extremely well. Um, they're not spooky, so they're not going to be nearly as spooky as everything else, and, uh, and they, they pull just as hard, if not harder, in many cases, because these guys can fight. But anyhow, I just thought I'd share that with you. The questions come in, and uh, I'm pleased to report that I finally have found a lure that works. But uh, thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Any questions at all, as always, comment down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best fishing club for inshore saltwater anglers, especially if you're going after redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder. There's nothing else like it. We actually guarantee you'll be catching more fish than ever before while saving money. We do this through our premium education, our exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.